Welcome to the Press for Conversation podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Layback Corey. I got my co-host, Tasha. I got my co-host, CG. Man, we got a special guest here today, man. This guy, he's a jack of all trades, man. He, he, he even a master at it, man. He's a graphic designer. He's a great entrepreneur. He hosts parties. He's a promoter, man. He's a marketer. Man, he does a lot, man. My boy, Jay Neely. What's up, my man? My guy. What's up, man? I appreciate y'all. So I appreciate going? y'all having me here, man. So we've been oh, looking yeah. forward to it. We've been looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. So the people out there that's watching this podcast, give us a rundown who Jay Neely is. Man, Jay Neely is a, a motivated, loving husband, first of all. Let me put okay. that out there. I like uh, that he put that first. You know, entrepreneur, family mm. man, loyal friend, and just a go-getter, man. I'm about just moving and progressing and always doing something, making it positive. Mm -hmm. It's on the grind. That's what's up. So tell us, tell us about this Sunday Fun Days you have on Sundays. Okay, so Sunday Fun Day is, is an event that I have with a couple of my longtime friends that I've been doing events with. Mm -hmm. uh, Bird of Game, Seven Field, Cash Out, mm -hmm. uh, Smoke is on it as well. But it's, it's at Delmar, Detroit, downtown. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of those events, you know, day parties have become kind of the, the new vibe on, on the weekends in Detroit. Okay. So uh, Sunday Fun Day is literally that, man. I'm just pushing, like, you know, Detroit. It's crazy. The market of nightlife has become so tough. I got tired of seeing like dudes standing around being scared to enjoy themselves. Like uh -huh. social media kind of changed the nightlife a little bit. People mm -hmm. literally try to be what they're putting out online. Mm -hmm. Like instead of just letting your hair down, having a good time. So right. Sunday fun day is exactly that. Delmar, we got liquor, water gun shots. It's just yeah, come I have see. a good time, come drink, come turn up. Yeah, I, I seen some you shooting that that little gun through that girl's breast too. <laughs> went down. I seen that too. <laughs> and that see that I, that's, I seen that too. See that's yeah. the stuff. It's, it's a fine line, you know. But. <laughs> I seen it. She was she was she was enjoying it too. You, her I knew you self. couldn't wait to get it. <laughs> I knew he couldn't wait to get to that type of stuff right there. So tell me, man, what's going up on Tuesdays? Man, you got Toxic Tuesdays, you got Quiet Storm Tuesdays. What's what's going on on Tuesdays, man? Yeah, so Tuesday, <laughs> me and my brother uh, Justin Floyd and our our, our partner uh, DJ Slick B, rest in peace. Um, we started an R and B event again. We we look for what's lacking in the city, and at that time, it was no real R and B, you know, related events. So we said, forget it, man. Let's let's go out on a whim. We actually reached out to a couple of other promoters, and they didn't think that the idea would actually work to do strictly all R and B music all night long. So we we took a risk. So we did it. Fun. Yep. The first one was literally we we probably had sixty five people there, but it was crazy because I literally had events at that time where I had three hundred people. Damn. But that sixty five felt better than anything I had ever done. So I knew we had something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's been going good. We we've been going four years now. So speaking of taking risks, see that's a lot of people don't know about entrepreneur. It's all about taking risks because if you don't take risks, you don't know how to fail. Some people are scared to fail. The only thing I'm scared of is becoming a consistent failure. That's exactly. okay. It's okay to fail. You yeah. have to fail. Definitely. But it's not okay to become a consistent failure. Exactly. That's the only thing people scared of. A lot of people scared to fail because they think they're going to be a consistent failure. But the only way you can become a consistent failure is if you don't take a risk. Exactly. You don't go at it. So being an entrepreneur, you're still giving back to the people because some people be like, well, I don't want to work for nobody. You're still working for the people as an entrepreneur. You just have your own business, but you're giving back. Exactly. To the people in your business, like so, I like that, man. I like that you you are entrepreneur and you actually giving back to the city and you putting your all into it, man, by hosting parties and just giving people opportunity. Just like a minute ago, you was just out there with three keys. You were just out there listening to them. A lot of people don't do that. They just brush them off, right? And we need more Jay Neely's and not just in this world just all over in the city you know so i appreciate that man and and like you said you had a lot of stuff i got a lot of stuff i want to talk to y'all about too because it's like so, and what i do i'm always on the go i'm always busy i don't get a chance to have these type of conversations with people and mm -hmm. even saying that about being an entrepreneur is like i've been on both sides of the fence like i went to school i got a degree mm -hmm. and i just didn't find that job that really stuck with me right. i was never afraid to do both i'm not like oh i don't want to work for anybody no, you got to do what's best for you. Right, right. You got to right. do what you got to do yeah. until you can afford to do what you want to do. Right. You so what you get? Your, what did you get your degree in? Uh, in marketing with a minor in uh, no marketing with the 
communications with a minor in marketing. That's good. So how did you get into party hosting? How did you do that? How did you get into that? So I was a student athlete at Eastern Michigan, and there was a girl on um, our staff that did the video and film for, like, our practices and everything in the games. Mm -hmm. So I knew that she was into promoting. And I had never really did like a big birthday celebration in my life like that. So mm. I'm like, I want to try it. So I approached her, asked her to do my birthday celebration. My birthday is every four years it falls on Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. So it's always around the holiday. So she was like, I'll do your birthday celebration, put you on the flyer. But mm. you got to help me promote these Sundays I'm starting. It's three weeks before your birthday. So mm. here's some flyers. I'll pay you. And I just went on campus, started passing them out. And, right. Uh, from that, from that moment, I'm like, oh, I can kind of do this. People mm -hmm. kind of rocking with me a little bit. Mm -hmm. The first party I ever did, though, was zero people there. Yeah. I tell so the people that the all the time. So what was the thing that made you say, you know what, this is it. This is what I'm going to pursue. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and leave that 9 to 5. To, to be honest, it's, it started as just fun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. I wasn't really thinking about the money in it. I was actually enjoying myself. Mm -hmm. And then once I saw you know, money being generated, it's like, okay, maybe I should take it a little more serious. But at that time, you know, people have all types of jobs now. People create jobs. The the internet and everything has created, like you can say, you can almost make up anything. Like you got YouTubers, you got influencers. So at that time, it, that didn't exist. So it was like, I didn't take it that serious. I'm like, I gotta go to finish, get my degree and get a good job. And this is my little side hustle in the meantime. So. It, it took literally maybe four years ago to where I was like, you know what, I can make this thing an actual career and grow in it. I like that you said that, though. I just want to kind of take it back because I know that a lot of the kids growing up, they just got in their mind because they seeing it so much now, entrepreneurship, and they feel like, oh, I don't want to work. That's not for me, you know. But what you said was very important. Like, sometimes you have to have that nine to five to support what you're trying to do. And I like the fact that you kind of said that, you know, sometimes you do have to work that nine to five or work for somebody to get where you want to go. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it's scary nowadays because people are seeing certain things in their face on social media and they're just thinking that it's an easy way to it. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this almost 15 years. I've had some successes. I've had bad times, too. I had times where I almost wanted to quit doing it. But, you know, it, I kind of just stuck with my guns. You know, it's, crazy. it's a it, continuous it, it, grind. It gets that way, man. It gets that way, man. Like I said, that's when sometimes you have to embrace fa fa failing. You have to embrace it. It's been times like now. I get people that during the podcast, some people tell me they uh, – one one person, I'm not going to put him out there, but he told me he want to come on my show and talk and get my followers up. So – I just said that's fine, you know. A lot of people, a lot of people, you know, saying I had to pay them order for them to come out, which is okay. That's fine, but you know, what I'm saying I, I'm I'm humble about it, and it's gonna be it's people that turn me down, you know, what I'm saying. But I know this, I know if this keep going on, it's it's gonna be lonely at the top for me. A lot of people ain't gonna I ain't gonna have around. Man, I already I'm, know. Like, I'm so inspired by people that are um, just motivated to just do it. Yeah. That don't have any fear. Man, yeah. I mean, when I first did it, man. I did it for my phone. I did this episode for my phone I, at 12 o'clock midnight. I did it for my phone. And, and my cameraman's there in the basement. I did it for my phone five episodes straight. Five episodes I was out there all day. I was just sitting here talking all day because I love to talk. I love, yeah. Like I said, I love conversation. I love to be nosy. You know what I'm saying? So I love, <laughs> you know, I'm curious. So I, that's why I named it the Press for Conversation Podcast. And, I like guys like you, Nick Varsity. It's a lot of guys that came. That's on my every, guy. All the guests that, that came to on the show. Man. Oh, Nick, for sure, man. Nick, Nick, man. Nick is one of those people. Like I love him. <laughs> like literally, I'm surrounded by optimists and people that are into not just ideas but really getting to work. I don't care how crazy. I'm that friend that you can call any time of the night where you get a random idea. You like, I'm thinking of this, and I'm like, mm -hmm. before I'm thinking of. Uh, that might not work. I'm the right. friend that's like, all right, how can we make this happen? Right. Like, I need people like that around me at all times. Right, you need people around you that's going to work. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you have, you don't want a lot of people around that's not doing nothing. You want people around you that, that's going to work. So how do you find that balance? Because you're promoting parties. And, I mean, you one of the hottest promoters in the city. Like, I know I didn't hit you up, like, what's going on on a Wednesday night? What's going on? So... How do you find that balance of being that family man, still being productive, you know what I mean, and still being out here in the night? Like? It's tough, I won't lie, but I, I, I literally take pride. And that's that's one thing I was literally talking about last week. Balance is important. Like, mm -hmm. 
Like, you know, it's it can be tough, but in my situation with my wife, when I met her, I was in college, and mm-hmm. I was doing this, and I was having a little bit of success, but I was mm-hmm. growing, and she's seen my journey over the years. Oh, so sure. she understands it a little more, but of course we have we had times where we kind of get into it with some of the marketing that I've been doing lately, and she's like, you took it a little Squirting too far a, this time. Water guns yeah. in a girl's mouth. Yeah, stuff, yeah. stuff like that. She, <laughs> she, she definitely will hit me up like, you took the shit too far tonight. I can, I can curse, right? Is that yeah, good? Yeah, yeah. 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 What, what's yeah. your best part about promoting? Like, what what was your greatest promotion where you, you actually had somebody shut the party down, something like that? Like the greatest event I've ever done? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. It's it's tough, man. I can't even I can't even put it into one exact moment. But some of my favorite events that I've done are uh, we had Ignite inside MGM. It was just a certain kind of vibe to it. Okay. Of course, Quiet Storm is 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 amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, just what we did in Strada and Royal Oak, where we kind of just yes, that was my vibe. It, it right was there. tough because it, it Royal Oak had that reputation for a minute, where it's like mm-hmm. black people. You know, that's yeah. one thing that's been tough along this journey. Is it's been a lot of years where they didn't really necessarily want the black crowd in a lot of these yeah. venues. Right. So, right. So we had to come in and show them, like, listen, I'm college educated. I'm gonna bring a good crowd. We not coming with the riff raff, no drama. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, we mm-hmm. made people dress up and wear suits. And so that, that was, was a that good was look. major though, because that kind of bridged that gap for people that's not like, I'm not about to be in the city. I'm not, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. It was just like a whole nother crowd. Right. I All right. Mean, yeah. That exactly. was a good vibe. This is the Pressful Conversation Podcast. For the people that's listening in live, make sure you hit call that number down below if you have any questions. I got a special guest in today. His name is Jay Neely. He's a great promoter. He's a great host. He's a great, great entrepreneur. I got my co-host Tasha right here. I got my co-host CG. Yo. My main man Darian is here. Um, so tell us about what you got going on this weekend, June twentieth. Man, it's a lot Chicago. going on this weekend. But Chicago, I'm excited about it, man. I gotta definitely give a shout out to my guy Jeff. Um, he owns a, a promotional company called Pyramid, but he started an all black event pr- uh, platform to okay. so where you can put your events. It's kind of like Eventbrite, but it's yeah. called Event Noir. It's black owned. They've been getting a lot of big funding and a lot of support for the platform. They're releasing a new platform. So me and Jeff have been working together almost four years. So uh, we did a really successful All-Star Weekend in Chicago. I just like when people do good business. Like I like okay. linking up with other promoters in other states, and they got everything yeah. together, so- and we can collaborate. So this Sunday, we got a yacht party. It's on the Anita D. Uh, yacht Charters in Chicago. Unfortunately, the it's tickets sold are already out, sold right? out. Mm-hmm. So it started at one. It started at one o'clock, right? Yeah, it's early. So one to five. One I'll to probably, five, yeah. I'll probably be sure. back in time for Delmar. So Delmar, yeah. It's Father's Day. So did you, so. Get, did you get a contract with Delmar? Um, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Or you part ownership? You really can't. No. You have an it. understanding. Nah. I, I got <laughs> something. I got something else brewing though that I can't really discuss. You discuss right now. Something but, but Delmar is my family. We, we don't necessarily have like a contract where I'm working for them or anything like that. Like partnership. But, right. But we do a lot of business together. But I'm my, I'm my own separate entity from them. Okay. okay. Have you ever felt like you got to get out of the city to kind of get to where you want to go? You know what? I, I felt like that at one point. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, okay, um, we, we all know how Detroit is. It's kind of crabs in the bucket. But I feel like it's getting uh, it's getting better from that standpoint. It is. It, and it's all about who you surround yourself with. Right. And it's the energy but, you put out as well. But the only way we, they can get that crab out of the bucket is if they bring more stuff here. They got to bring stuff here. They're starting to. True. That's right. And not just that. only downtown, like and they need to go through the do the hoods and neighborhoods. Nah, I don't know yeah. about that. It's, it's well, starting. It's, some people thing. don't know how I'm not, that. I'm not gonna yeah, lie, but, but listen, that, it's, it's starting to expand. I'm not gonna lie. I got some. I got some white neighbors in my neighborhood now. I'm like, yeah, oh my, yeah. I'm looking yeah. around like they walking their yeah. dogs. They out here. They are. <laughs> I love it. I'm all for. It. I love it. It used to be a point where you drive down. Like I love my city. It used to be a point where you drive downtown or whatever, and nothing is popping. It's right. dead. Now. It's it's live. And, and you know Everything what? is turning around. We have to embrace our court, our culture, and mm-hmm. we have to document things so that you know as things are growing and people complain about gentrification, it's mm-hmm. up to us to document and right. keep hold of our culture and keep developing new things for us so we don't get lost in the sauce. Right. Right. 
Like I like yes. that that new skating. They just built I was just gonna it. bring that up. You see, they had yeah. our black our black artists did that work. Yeah, you, know what I'm saying? you got the fourth the little so. basketball court, the skating ring right there on, on Monroe. Right, you know, and you know Randolph. I mean, it's it's great, man. And they talking about building another one in Pontiac. So it's it's great to bring things back to the city, man. But when I look at your parties, man, I'm like this is that's everybody they dressed up, they profess, they look professional. I'll be looking, I'm like, dang, man. That's I'm, what I'm I like, going, keeping going it on, on a certain level. I'm going you know to work. Yeah, I but, love But you chill. know what's crazy, too? I like to, like, I'm big on having all vibes. You know what I'm mm. saying? I don't right. even... I, I, it, it's crazy because I know other promoters and I'm I'm trying to reach out to different types of promoters too. Like even some of the hood ones too. It's like I'm I'm not that guy that's like, oh we we clean up, we're just this kind of way. Mm-hmm. No, we we want to embrace everybody and have different vibes. So right. I feel like you can come to me if you want to dress up and be clean one day or you want to dress mm-hmm. down and turn up. I got mm-hmm. any type of situation for you. So what is a typical day for Jay Neely outside of your inde- your skills that you have? What's what's a typical day for you? Man, typically lately, I, I, like I said, I've been trying to find that balance. So I'm really like big on like my son. He'll be three in July. Oh, so okay, right. when I'm not when I'm not at an event or something, I'm really trying to take time to be present. That's been like a big thing for me lately because I'm always on the go. Literally, my phone is always buzzing with somebody trying to book a booth or do this. So I'm always on my phone. So when I'm not at an event, I'm really trying to unplug a little bit and spend time with the family, mm-hmm. kick it with my I son. Have, I have a model because. Me, she hasn't witnessed it yet, but me and him have. When people call and say they come and they don't show up, and we sitting here waiting, I have a policy. If you don't appreciate my presence, I'm gonna make you respect my absence. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that pisses me off when somebody call and say they come and we book it, and then you don't show up and we sit here looking stupid. And we gonna put you on blast. All right, All right. Well, I you don't see, know I made about sure I was on that. time. Okay, you were. I'm late to a lot of yeah. stuff. I'm not gonna lie, but I was like, let me make sure. No, I'm you on was time. actually you was actually on time, yeah. but you still came. A lot of people book stuff with us and didn't even show up. And me and him would be sitting. Me and him would be sitting here. We'd be like, um, right, you know. So, but like I said, we appreciate you coming by because, like I said, not to throw shade, but this is something I really love doing. I love doing. I love interviewing you. I love to see where you're headed, at, where you're going at. You know Appreciate what I'm that, and it, I respect y'all the same. And I, I look at everybody on the same level. Right. I don't care what level you on. I respect everybody's craft the same. I see I like the show the journey, blowing man. up and being yeah. up here. I like to support people at whatever level they are at currently. I'm not looking at like I wouldn't treat this podcast different than what I would treat the Breakfast Club. I'm going to respect it the right. same way. You know what? I've been, I've been getting teased lately. I've been getting teased lately by my family. Oh, you, you got the Breakfast Club again? Uh, you, got, you, you got Angela E. You got Charlamagne. You got this now. Like, but everybody no, got sure, that. Man. You got to remember that everybody <laughs> got that. Everybody started from somewhere. Right. Every I'm pretty sure whatever major, like if you want to say the Breakfast Club, I'm sure when they first started, people was clowning them. You know, right. about what they doing. Exactly. So you just got to stay man, focused. I so much, trust me. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, trying man. to party. So so many family members and friends and man, well, so-called you, friends. You like you still surprised. throwing them little parties. I used right. to hear that a lot. Now, you be now su- it's totally you'll different. Now they calling you like, hey, bro, can you get me in? Right. Can I? You'll be surprised. Like, you'll be surprised. She got on me about it too, but I got blasted right before a little bit after she put me on blast a little bit about okay. me breathing hard on camera. They're like, <laughs> damn man, why are you breathing so hard? My, my dad called. My father you called. You doing it the right way. You got to embrace it and yeah, make it I'm funny, like, hey, man. I'm, That's I mean, it. That's I mean, all you I'm, do. I mean, hey, I'm fat. I'm still living. Hey, I'm I'm hey. talking to you. Hey. But she, after she put, you know, she, she didn't she didn't put me on blast. I did it publicly, privately. You privately. Know, we were but in my, our group chat. Mm-hmm. But my family members, my sister and them, damn, boy, I can hear you breathing all the way from the kitchen. But I ain't going to. Hey, at least your people watching. You know right, right. And I'm right. Not, we got at people that watching. won't even share in your family right. you know what I'm saying won't even oh this is a podcast my, my cousin so or my, that, my brother yeah. or whoever right. you know what I'm so what are you going to be doing after this weekend are you going to be just chilling or you got more 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 in uh, events man right now I like two Monday and Wednesdays are like my pretty much only real off days right now. Mm. So I'm I'm kind of busy, but I actually got another baby on the way. My, oh, se- my, second, my second son will be here and it's like crunch time. Yeah. So he'll be here right. next Friday. So speaking so. of family, I'm going to be messy. So That's cool. Okay. So have you ever had a, like, I know you have. Have you had a situation where you had to kind of like somebody came on you wrong and you had to just kind of like, you know, put the situation in check? 
you know what? We we can get into all of this. Okay. Yeah. I told y'all I'm not shying away from that. My, my, my wife know that I have a, like, I don't know if y'all know, but I used to do a podcast myself. Oh, I, yeah? I'm, I'm not scared to speak on nothing. So. Okay. Within this nightlife, of course, like, mm-hmm. it's, it's always an opportunity for things. But to be mm-hmm. honest, like, I've done, before I got married, I feel like I've went through almost anything you can imagine in nightlife. I was really wild at one point. My mm-hmm. wife know I was wild at one point. She seen mm. me at my best and she seen me at my worst. Right. So it's nothing that, you know, really phases us. Like, right. so I know some people look at things that go on within the nightlife and they look at my wife and wonder, do she feel a way? And uh-huh. listen, this is business for both of us. She know what it is. Uh-huh. Like right. I sat her down during quarantine and like, cause before quarantine, I had chilled out a lot. Like I stopped mm-hmm. drinking for seven months. So I was literally in the club sober. Nobody knew. I, I had like a decoy drink. Mm. People offered me a drink. I'm like, I already got one. It's nothing but cranberry juice and Red Bull or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to the nightlife and women coming at me and stuff, I, mm. I've been really chill. It's like, That's right. not what I asked you, though. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> I so you you want to know a specific situation. I want to know a specific time. I want to know what was said, oh, what shit. happened, wow. where somebody was just, you know, pushed oh, that line God. and you had to. Okay. Uh-huh. I, if y'all want to take it there, uh, we do. If you going, uh, all right, let's it, go ahead. What? You got to drink his water okay. for this one. All right, Try so to I, keep it PG. Okay. We got a 15. So this was like, <laughs> this was before we got married, though, but we were together. Uh-huh. So I had a girl who who liked me. And, you know, it's my job to flirt a little bit. Uh-huh. Right. You know, keep have, coming back. I don't want to be mean and shoo him away. Right. But right. If, I, it's a lot of times I know a female might like me, but it's cool. I'm doing my job. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So this one, she is a foreign girl. And some of the foreign ones are a little different. They don't understand some of the etiquette of the nightlife and how things go. So she's thinking the little thing, like me inviting her out and her walking in with me in a group is more than what it is. uh So I had to turn her down one night. She tried to come on to me. She was trying to get me to take her home because she was drunk. And I can tell she kind of did it on purpose. Uh She stayed far. I'm like, I can't take you home, baby girl. Like, But she was in my car waiting until she can go for her uber oh so she had it but she just doing too much in the car i'm like man come on now i didn't do nothing but she got kind of stalkerish she came to like she ended up popping up a few times to the events and so what you how you handle that so what happened where it all kind of faded away is um somebody from a random fake page sent pictures of me in the club talking to a girl and they like, oh, aren't you? Don't you have a girlfriend? Why are you doing this? Like, oh my pictures from God. across the club, though. Okay. So I already knew it was this girl, and she was like, "I'm gonna send it to your to your girl." So she DM'd her Whoa, the pictures what? of me dance, like not even dancing with a girl, but just talking to her. You know how you been down? You just talking to her. It was innocent for real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she DM'd my my girl and mm-hmm. found out my girl really well. My wife now she really liked that. Mm-hmm. She don't play them games. Yeah, yeah. So she got she immediately. You know, she she asked me about it. We had a conversation. Uh-huh. She was a little pissed that it even went so to that. But did she go Mayweather on her? She was going to. Oh, okay. she, <laughs> she threatened her. She said, what up? Okay. Like, she, she like, I ain't one of these other girlfriends that you think in this nightlife. My right, wife right. don't play. Uh-huh. My wife would beat your ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, quick question, real quick. Yeah. Can you give give the people out there that's watching this podcast any information you can provide for us to get in touch with Jay Neely? For any hosting or any party event. So I'm excited that you even asked this question because I finally was like, all right, let me get my website together. Mm-hmm. So for everything, any info, just mm-hmm. go to hostedbyjneely.com. My phone mm-hmm. number is on there, my mm-hmm. email. Mm-hmm. You can get tickets to my events. You can book reservations. You official, can, official. Yeah, I got merch and stuff too. So it's mm-hmm. hosted, H-O-S-T-E-D, by J-N-E-E-L-Y.com. Hosted by Jay Neely.com. Okay. So are you on Instagram as well? Yep. So, Instagram? yep. so my Instagram is J underscore Neely. That's N E E L Y. That's mm-hmm. my Instagram. That's my Twitter. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not, uh, I got two Facebook pages. I don't use them that much, but uh, mm-hmm. John Neely. Then I got John Mean Swag Neely's old. People tease me about that Mean <laughs> Swag thing so much. So what's the end goal for you? Ownership. Yeah. You know what's crazy? It's like, when the pandemic hit, I had a lot going on. Like, I, I do other things. So, at, at some point, I'm thinking, like, okay, am I going to continue with this? Or am I looking for an exit route into something different? You know, I thought about real estate. I thought about a lot of different things. Like, I own one house right now, and I have a tenant. It's good, thinking about that. But mm-hmm. when the quarantine hit, I was almost really thinking, like, okay, I need a faster exit route. I, I hate that. Yeah. 
they, they can just cut into our business like this. I was doing so well. Mm -hmm. So to have it end like that sucks. So, um, but quarantine was good for me. I right. came out, got more focused and it seemed like put a some, lot of things it seemed together. Like the so. It seemed like for some people, it wasn't a pandemic. It was a pandemic. Like a lot of people right. came out, you know, just this is the time to sit back and get humbled and be able to match you know figure out what you want to do it mm -hmm. opened like, a lot of opportunities for people. right and yeah. it, it, it also really took definitely. advantage of it yeah. right it also got yeah. you to sit down with family too man yeah because there's not nothing like chilling with family because i look at them as family you know what i'm saying look at them as family look at what Darren, he just say he ain't over from <laughs> what? right 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 from a can oh, okay. of paint <laughs> um, we got uh we got company okay yeah, all okay. right i got a yeah, so, in. but no ownership is next it's like yeah. mm -hmm. it's it's coming soon like, that's what we looking for. I can't speak on it yet, but it's mm -hmm. gonna be a shocker for the city. Okay, we here so. for it. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, man, we thank you, man. We want to congratulate yeah. you. Keep going, man. Keep doing Appreciate what you're doing, man. Yes. Keep doing what you do. Cause I thought you was gonna come here and be like, you know what? I'm a millionaire for OnlyFans. I'm like, wait, wait, hold on, <laughs> hold on. What's God. up with you? You want? Corey, so I'm gonna start you on OnlyFans. You I better mean, not start me on OnlyFans. He asked everybody about an OnlyFans. He only want an OnlyFans. No, I, the I'm devil a, is a liar. No, I don't. I'm going to be your backer. I'm going to press that button. No, I don't. I'm going to be your backer. It's going to be some weird fetish stuff, too, like, oh, like yeah. big, man, yeah. big man feet or something. Yeah. Oh, man. We want, I want to thank y'all for coming out to the Press for Conversation podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Layback Corey. I got my co-host, Tasha. Hey. My co-host, CG. And I got my main man. Thank you for coming through, man. Jay Appreciate Mills. Appreciate y'all, man. Love. Thank you so much. Love. Yes. Peace.